you're in this non-dual state, if you're in this, you know, totally present state, that in fact you're much more there than you normally are, or than you would have been before. And what happens when you're as you were before is you're thinking about how it was last time, or what protocols do I use this time, and what does she like, or what does he like, and how do I go through this thing? And so you're not even there for the event. I mean, you're someplace else. You're someplace else, you're unavailable to the person. You can't be sensitive to what they're feeling right now, what's what's happening for them. So you you really take what could be a great experience sexually, and you turn it into something that's really mediocre. And the more longer you do that, the more mediocre it becomes. And so you can come to this thing very fresh, open, and empty. And it becomes a different experience. But even at that, it still pales in comparison to what we're talking about with non-dual states. Yeah, part, part of the, the non-dual and how it's different and better than sex and different and better than the, the, the uh, you know, ecodelic experience right. is uh, you can superimpose it, or it becomes superimposed on <clears throat> all the different standard brain states that you have, all the different experiences, right? If you can carry that with you, you can be present during each of those. Oh, the absolutely. emotions of grief, the emotions of, you know, the elation of right. success and and really relate to people in, in, in a different way. Right. But they, they aren't simply additive, as we all know. I mean, you can't add, you know, our, this little study that we did, our psychedelics scored like nine and a half. I mean, this this uh, non-dual state like ten. Sex was about an eight. But it doesn't, they don't add up. If you do non-dual state, sex and drugs, uh, so you, you, you don't have to, yeah, you, you don't have to be, it doesn't even, 20, you get 24 or something. I mean, it, it does make you, though, if you're really uh, in this non-dual state, present for whatever comes up. And so you are available and present for everything, even walking through the beautiful sky and seeing the beautiful leaves that are turning. I mean, you can be fully present for that in a way you aren't normally there, and that can be a, a tremendously a deep experience. So you're present for everything that comes up. That's sort of what feels psychedelic about it to me, is that, you know, I can just be riding my bicycle down a road and then I stop and I look at those corn uh, stalks that are, you know, ready to be harvested and just blowing in the breeze a little bit, making this sound, you know, it's totally unspeakable. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I could stand there and stare and experience uh, that for eternity. And it yeah. feels like I am when I'm doing it. And yeah, that's that's one of the things that I, I learned about psychedelics, and I'm sure other people yeah. have, have written about this, that it's really, it's very much, if you just relax your eyes and your ears and, you know, your ego recedes, you start to see hallucinations. I mean, a hallucination yeah. is nothing other than uh, less interpretation of the perception. So uh -huh. if you just, you know let your eyes go. I mean, all these little things are already there in your vision. You just look past them mm -hmm. as you, you know, you're filtering more when in, in, you know, standard consciousness. Right. It's what Huxley called the reducing valve of ordinary consciousness as opposed to the mind at large. Um, but what's interesting is, is then you can walk around and you, you're right, you can accept, you can be in this kind of sensory cognitive soft eyes mode of just accepting all things and then what happens is that you see beyond even the quote-unquote hallucinations and it's as if you you're seeing the divine ground behind everything it's, it's kind of it's obviously you know classically difficult to put into words but there's a kind of glow to everything that starts to emanate and when she noticed more and more, and is and is almost like the uh, object, objective aspect of that being held that you mm -hmm. talked about in another video, mm -hmm. right? The, the yeah. more you let go, right. the more you just feel that you know the world is is you, and the world is holding holding you. It was the background radiation from the Big Bang, you know, the three degrees of... Uh, Hallelujah to it, then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean you know, it's, it's the unity of the universe yes. that you're relaxing into and accepting mm -hmm. and, and, you know, seeing those connections, not seeing the, you know, the separations. And the static kind of aspect of we are here now and everything is solid and static and nothing must change because I feel this per felt this perfect moment once that I must hold on to forever. Uh, where is she? <laughs> you know, 
But instead, as you're saying, if you kind of relax into the fact that you're involved in this ongoing big bang, right? It's beautiful. Well, you just you just go away. I mean, yeah. as you, as you just get yeah. out of the picture. Yeah. And even back to the Eckhart thing with Oprah, uh, he did say he could understand how the LSD would help people mm -hmm. because it. And I'm a complete virgin on psychedelics, so I, I'm speaking completely all secondhand. Uh, but he said, I can see how this could help people because it does jam up the circuits and there's there's no space for anything to happen inside except to be present because you just everything's else jammed. Mm -hmm. So I can see why, what he was saying, what he was mm -hmm. saying, from what you were circulating. Yeah. But just, guys, just getting out of the way. That the goal is, as in the title of these dialogues, beyond thought, right? Which is another taboo. It never even occurred to me being somebody who lived so much in his head, that the goal was actually not better thoughts, not more intensely creative thoughts. These are all beautiful things, but no thought. Like this, this to me was not even on any kind of hypothetical radar, so, that it, so much so that when I had one of my most powerful ayahuasca experiences, and then the next day, I remember walking around in Iquitos, Peru, saying, "What is this feeling? You know, it's unbelievable." You know, I, and I and I wanted to, you know, I, I basically prayed to this feeling, you know, mm. enchanted and gave thanks for this feeling. And the feeling was total silence of thought. Yeah. Well, I, 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 <laughs> we've talked about it before. This, yeah. this Ayahuasquero who spoke at uh, Towards Sides of Consciousness conference in Stockholm. Uh, he went to his plenary talk and. Dandy said, you know, this is all about having no thoughts. I thought, well, I was scared. Why is he saying the same thing that, you know, this whole process is about? It's all about having no thoughts. And so it led him to that, that possibility. Right, so I feel like that needs to repeat, be repeated over and over again, in fact, because, you know, then, you know, I, I think of what some of my students post, say, in, in classes, and they say, but, you know, First, they say that you know selflessness is going to be totally boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we 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 got with that one. Then we get to say, well, you know, that's easy for you to say, professor or you know, retiree. You know, I have to get up in the morning and I have to go and I have to work this job and then I have to go to these classes where these people are all addressing me to think, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think, as it were, that what's beautiful is to remind people that in fact you're going to be able to do all that. And you're going to be able to do all of that better, with more alacrity, with more aplomb, with more insight. Then you're going to, when that version of yourself is trying to think for the situation. Right. Yeah, that was we talked before. My biggest surprise, because I was I was uh, running a big operation, a big had a big job, and I believed I was thinking all the time and making things happen, and then there were no thoughts there. And as we said before, I found myself to be much more effective afterwards yeah. than I was before. And I can't imagine going back. People have said, would you take the blue pill and go back? I said, no, I, could, I can't imagine anything more ungood <laughs> than going back. So, no, you wouldn't go back. No, I, well, yeah. I can't imagine it by going back. I mean, I just, in fact, in fact one, of the, one of the great things you, you taught me was you said, you know, when on, on ayahuasca, there was a period. I had taken this stuff. And it was going to last a certain time, and it was going to be over. So I had control, but not control. But I, yeah. I, I knew it was, it was finite. You said the scary thing about non-dual states is that I may not come back. And now you say, well, God, what if I had to go back? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's really true. And, and, you know, an analogy that happened to me yesterday is that I was with my wife, who I love very much, and I was holding her, and she said, oh, I hear your heart. Mm -hmm. I can hear your heart. And I said, oh, what does it sound like? And she said, boom, 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 boom. And then she started to get tired from saying it <laughs> so much. And I was like, see? I was just like, my heart just does it. Yeah. But if we try to do it on purpose, oh, yeah. we get exhausted. Not good. Not good. <laughs> and, and I think that, that, that there's something deep in that, that just like, mm -hmm. let your heart do it. Right. And, and everything will come to you. Yeah. You don't need to do it for your heart. But there's no conditioning in our culture right now to support that. Yeah. 
the, the conditioning is all, you must do this thing and this thing and have this drug and take this and pharmaceutical. And you must do all these things. Yeah. In fact, you don't need to do anything. You just need to get out of the way. If you get out of the way, then amazingly, double, triple amazingly, yeah. everything takes care of itself more better than before. Much How is my heart better. going to beat if my I don't tell it what to do? Read, and I'll talk just like I always have <laughs> talked, even better. And I'll do work, uh -huh. complicated work, like we always did, only better. Yeah. I mean, all that happens, you just lose this self-referential blah, blah narrative. It's just quiet in there. Yeah. What a, I just can't imagine taking a blue pill. No.